Hello, world. Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast in my Microsoft Access series. And I made three screencasts, and I stopped myself and I said, we really need to back up and hit the big concept of why and when we would use Microsoft Access in the first place, because there are some places where it fits and there are some places where it doesn't, and those conceptual things are important to know. First of all, we need to realize that Access is a relational database product, and there are many benefits of managing your data with a relational database that you cannot do with a flat file like Excel spreadsheets. And the benefits here are on the left. Your data is going to be improved because there's less redundant data. It's more accurate. There are fewer errors. There's better consistency with the information. There's better performance and better productivity. The bottom line is that you have better data and better decisions when you manage your data with a relational database over flat files. Now, the negatives on the right are that the design phase takes a lot of time and expertise, and it's critical to getting all these benefits. So that's where the rub is, and that's what I'm attempting to give you a high-level overview of in these screencasts. Now, it's important to understand where access works, and generally, a good access application is when you find yourself having several Excel spreadsheets of the same data. Now, if you consolidate that data in a relational database in access, you'll have better data, better decisions, multiple people will work with the same data at the same time, and you have new tools such as data entry forms that make data entry easier, and also queries and reports where you can save different views and representations of the data that you simply cannot do with an Excel spreadsheet. And the bottom line on access is that it's excellent for managing historical transactions, sales, inventory, training, tickets, visits, surveys, those types of historical transactions that your business might be producing. Now, there are times, of course, though, where Excel is far superior to access. For example, Excel is much easier to learn. There's just a spreadsheet, columns and rows, so there's a lot of familiarity with Excel. And also, Excel has a very superior charting and graphing tool. So bottom line, Excel is fantastic for managing projections into the future. Fantastic at playing what if analysis and changing assumptions and seeing how those assumptions ripple through budgets or income statements or commissions or sales. It's wonderful also for decision making, such as weighted criteria analysis. Now, a few years ago, I wrote a textbook on this very subject. It's called Portfolio Projects for Business Analysis. But if you're interested in a bunch of examples of how and when we use Excel best and how and when we use Access best, this might be for you. So the first 10 chapters are all about Excel and give you projects, real world projects where Excel is applied. Budgets, income statements, balance sheets, cash flow analysis, all the things that you would typically use Excel for. And then the last five chapters get into relational database management and access. When your historical data, when your transactions demand and require the integrity and the accuracy of an access database. Microsoft Access doesn't fit all data transactions, of course, but it does work extremely well on a local area network, a single building where you have three to six simultaneous users and they're trusted. And by that, I mean there's no user level security in Access. Once someone opens that Access database, they pretty much have access to all of the data. So if you have extremely sensitive data, or if you're trying to communicate across the internet, you're going to need different technologies. Microsoft Access works really well on a local file server in a single building where you have three to six simultaneous users. Now you can have many more users, but once you get beyond about six people hitting that database constantly through data entries or queries, it does slow down. It's a single vendor Microsoft rapid application development machine for small trusted users and applications. Now, relational database software is so popular that there are several different vendors that provide relational database management systems. Microsoft has access at the low end and then Microsoft SQL Server, which has the ability to work with different technologies and has user level security. And then there are the open source products such as MySQL or Postgres. 
And then there are the big boys that run the entire world, such as Oracle and IBM's DB2. And there are even other types of database management products called NoSQL databases, which are great at managing the new types of data, such as blogs or unorganized data or multimedia data. But relational database software still organizes traditional transactions the best. If you're interested in database management as a concept and how to create a relational database from scratch and how to fix common relational database problems, this is the textbook for you. If you want a good textbook, a good introductory textbook on relational database management and SQL and how to take a set of data and normalize it and create a healthy relational database, this is the book for you. However, if you've got an access database and you just want to dive in and really understand access better with a lighter touch on data relationships and normalization, this is the textbook for you. And one last thing, I'm going to open up a database and just show you the power of a relational database. Here I'm looking at a query where we have industries, company names, cities, states, job titles, and starting salaries. And we're noticing that the company name is duplicated here because one company can offer many different jobs. So if Airflow Manufacturing changes its name to Airflow Systems, for example, all I have to do in a relational database is make that modification one place and every single place that Airflow Manufacturing was listed in a query or a form or a report has now become Airflow Systems. And why? Because the data is stored one place only here in the table. And here's Airflow Systems. The data is located one place only in the tables as a single record. When you're working on queries, if that record is related to many jobs, it's selected many times out of the table. Let's do this one more time. How about Accent Group? We're going to change the name of Accent Group to Accent Associates on any record. We see that immediately being registered in the relational database and reselected for these three records. And let's go back to the companies table and we see Accent Associates. So that's why the data integrity in a relational database is so much higher and so much better than duplicating this data in multiple spreadsheets. That would drive you nuts because you'd never know which copy of the data was the most current, accurate, and correct. In a relational database, you do not have that problem. You know that single set of data is the most up-to-date, accurate, and reliable information available on this subject. And that's what makes a relational database so powerful. Thank you.